Ready? Well, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Live from Dave's Office, except uh, for the first time, we're not actually in Dave's Office. We are uh, remote. We're doing the smart thing, being uh, socially distancing from each other. Um, and uh, so this is really uh, live from Dave's home office. So uh, uh, without further ado, here's our pastor, Dave Kettleson. Yeah, we're not just six feet. We're about six miles apart. So we're, we're keeping our distance. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, we have a special guest today named Josh Gilbert. And Josh, um, we're excited that you're here today. And just tell us, who is Josh Gilbert and how did you become the person you are today? <laughs> oh, goodness. I hope the some dogs barking. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I uh, it's great to be with you guys. I love... Uh, Love hanging out with you guys. I love Hamilton. Just, it has a special place in my heart, um, especially since I was a kid. Um, just grew up really loving music and stuff like that. And I don't really know what drew drew me to it, but you know, had a musical family and all that. But I mean, I I I would I would stop and say though that a lot of us try to define ourselves by like what we do and like our job and all this kind of different things that the world has for us, but at the end of the day, um, we just have to kind of sit back and say, well, I'm a child of God. You know, yeah. I, I have that as my identity and the Lord gives and the Lord takes away, the scriptures say. So, you know, some parts of my life, I may have this strength, I may have this talent or this calling, but then other parts of my life later on, I may have a different calling. So I kind of have to just surrender to that idea. Um, and sometimes it's a hard lesson to learn, especially as a musician, you know, <laughs> as a working musician or as an artist. You know, a, lot of, a lot of my generation didn't want the warehouse job or the desk job, so we kind of revolted and tried to become artists. For <laughs> Several generations do that in cycles, I think, through, the, uh, through history. But it's, it's it can be a really tough road and but at the end of the day, I'm just grateful for, um, you know, what God's done in my life, what he's uh, used me for, um, and just grateful for the family I have and that I'm his child. And at, at the end of the day, I just rely on him. And um, mm. yeah. that's all I have really to uh, to show for things is that um, he's He's leading me by the hand through life, and I'm his child. So <laughs> I love how you... Uh, you point everything to Christ. You know, you and I have had some time. We've sat at Starbucks. You've shared your story with me. Uh, tell our viewers today, how did you get interested in music? What led you that direction? Yeah, I mean, I don't really know. Um, just you know, always interested in that. I mean, I think as a kid uh, growing up in Christian school, uh, we went to a little Seventh-day Adventist church as a, as, as a kid. Um, the church, I think, had 30 people. And the Christian school had like 20 of them. <laughs> and uh, they were always doing little musical Christmas plays, stuff like that. And mom, my mom was, you know, grew up singing in church and, and choirs. And she, she, I think, encouraged us to do little talent shows and things like that and um, for the church and for the school. Um, so I think just, you know, that little bit of encouragement, I just kind of ran with it. And uh, then picked up a guitar at age so oh, Christmas, uh, thir age 13, and um, just locked myself in a room practically and taught myself how to play guitar, <laughs> became obsessed with it, um, and then, you know, kept going from there, music through high school, choir, choir and voice through high school and college, and eventually, uh, you know, I had a band with my brother and cousin, and we toured for about 10 years. We slept in our van and camped out in Walmart parking lot, did, doing 200 concerts a year all over the nation, <laughs> up until uh, from about 2005 to about 2011. And the tornadoes came through Tennessee. You know, that was a big turning point for me because kind of I had, I had poured my life into music as a young person. Didn't have much to lose. Yet I lost about everything during that time. 
uh, the tornado destroyed our van, which was practically where we were living as young hippie musicians <laughs> and camping. And um, that was kind of the dream. That was the only course I had, but that got destroyed. Um, and then I just basically picked up the guitar and said, okay, God, you know, if you want me to keep doing this thing, just lead me on or give me something else to do. And he's been opening more doors ever since. And, um, you know, just, just kind of like, kind of moved me into, a variety of music rather than just a one track mind. And so I've been able to serve a lot of different churches, ministries. Uh, I've got a t-shirt with a youth camp that I served at uh, for a number of years. Um, you know, I play in restaurants, um, you know, uh, civic events, all kinds of things, weddings. So just looking at all those opportunities to uh, uh, that, that as an open door that I can maybe be a light or maybe present some positivity um, and then also present the gospel maybe to those who, who, um, you know, haven't heard it yet. And so that's kind of like a quick, short, <laughs> extremely abbreviated thing. But, you know, I, I, yeah. at the end of the day, when I was 13 years old, I picked up the guitar, played for about a year. I put a band together with my brother and cousin in our, in our uh, basement garage. And I I just felt really impre felt impressed from God that I was supposed to be writing music for people. And it may not be just church people or for church service, but it was just, I'm going to write music um, and reach people with it. You know, and I really had that impression at age 14 and it's been the same ever since. So, you know, I don't, I don't sit around trying to define it per se. I'm not marketing myself. <laughs> I just kind of say, all right, here's the songs for the year or the next couple of years. God, this is kind of the message that you have given me through song. Use them. Y use me. Use me however you, you wish. So so it's just kind of Amen. being open to being sent like that. You know, that's kind of always been my, my mindset. And that's, I think, at the end of the day, what drives me and what's gotten me into music is is really just answering that call from the cool. Lord. So. That's, that's an incredible story, Josh. And I love how you, through all of this, you kept your faith and your trust in God. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Josh has been leading our, our band at Hamilton. And we have been so blessed with you and those that surround you uh, there. Josh, um, I have another question for you. And that is, yes. during this, this crazy time of kind of being sequestered in our homes, uh, you know, quarantine, what is something you're doing with your family to stay positive? Ah, yeah, that's kind of tough. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> well, I think for the most part, when it doesn't rain, we are um, outside doing some gardening. And we have like a, a hillside property that's pretty much a, <laughs> like a 20 degree <laughs> slope. Um, but we've terraced it in different ways and the kids, believe it or not, ride their bikes in our backyard in this. We've made this sort of dirt track, almost like BMX, BMX bikes. Oh, <laughs> anyway, awesome. so we, we've spent the last few weeks kind of digging up things. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, my wife's got me landscaping, you know, hard labor. No. <laughs> and she's got a lot That's of cool. A lot of plants. Uh, she's got a full garden ready to go. All kinds of stuff like that. So oh, that's cool. Hey, Josh. Do you have um, anything? Yeah, Josh, I had a couple questions for you, Josh. I know that um, yeah, you know every every week we get to see you play guitar. Uh, what other instruments uh, do you? What are you proficient at in your musical uh, repertoire? Oh, yeah. Sorry to let you down, but I just I only know guitar. <laughs> and voice. I had, I uh, went to uh, to Southern and you know voice scholarships, classical voice, um, you know almost opera kind of stuff, but not not fully. But so yeah, those two things. Um, my brother, on the other hand, um, he plays a lot with me when I do shows, concerts, events. He he uh, he plays drums, bass, bass is his main thing, vocals, keys. He plays guitar. He has actually has more guitars than me. Wow. <laughs> and more stuff than me. 
<laughs> more amplifiers, more, uh, you know, but, um, but yeah, he's been, he's, he's always been a blast to play with. We're actually going to be, uh, debuting, um, we're, well, we're doing like a live Facebook concert every week. Uh, so he'll be joining me, um, either on bass or probably going to be drums this week. He'll just be bouncing around. So it's, it's always been a blast to play with him. I really look up to him in that regard. He's kind awesome. of a, a jack of all trades kind of musician <laughs> but i'm just one guitar <laughs> um, what about, now you, i know that you do a lot of uh, original music and a lot of um you know songwriting what 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 genre do you like mostly fit in where where would you define your music ah uh, well um i Personally, I, um, I, uh, it's kind of, I don't know, it sounds bad, but it's kind of double-minded. <laughs> I love, I love contemporary Christian music and, um, especially it was a huge influence when I was young, um, and first picked up the guitar and started listening to music. I mean, when I was age eight, I was listening to, I had all the Michael W. Smith tapes. I had, um, uh, you know, one of my favorite songwriters was Wayne Watson. I don't know if anyone would remember that name. It's oh, the old 80s, I early 90s. Yeah. So, but my dad would take us to to his concerts and things like that. And so that was, you know, that kind of like, that kind of early CCM sound, you know, was always a big influence on me. And it's such a positive uh, influence. And then, of course, the Christian rock, you know, early stuff when that came out, DC Talk and um, in fact, that reminds me, you know, Ann Allen, you all have known her well. Um, just want to drop this in there. Yeah. You know, it's, this is kind of a random thought, but just, you know, again, you know, with all that's gone on, you know, thinking of her and thinking of the family and that, and, you know, um, that, you know, paying homage to that too. Like she was a big influence on me when I was a kid. Um, it, her uh, son was a good friend of mine. We would go to all the Newsboys concerts, and she would take us, you know, to DC Talk, Newsboys, all those concerts every year. Um, and when I'd never heard of that kind of thing before, and so that that whole sound that that was a big influence on me. And uh, so I fit in, I fit in with that pretty well. The modern CCM stuff, you know, I'm getting older. I don't necessarily fit in quite as well, but I know it, um, especially the message, um, anything that's really encouraging. Um, you know, if it's if it's real, that's okay. It's it's real. If it's encouraging and pointing us to Christ, that seems to put my mind in the best place. Um, however, I also dove into classic rock uh, in my late high school and college years, just because there's so much guitar playing in that music. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my favorite groups along that line are, you know, anything from, of course, the Southern rock stuff, Almond Brothers, that kind of stuff. I love that. Um, that has a big influence on my guitar playing. And then also bands like U2. U2 is probably my favorite band. In fact, you'll, you might be able to see a picture of their, them above yeah. my head in the room. <laughs> but yeah, U2, it, just the sound that they created, I studied it uh, when I was with my bands through the years, just, just how, how they were able to set, create a sound with just a few guys. You know, It was just such a huge sound. So I just, I love, that was a big influence on me. Um, but yeah, so I kind of am in the middle, a little bit of Southern rock, a little bit of CCM, you know, guitar driven cool. music. It's kind of what I love to, to, to write. So, <laughs> um, and, and speaking of you loving to write, you write quite a few songs and we would love for you to play one of your songs. I asked you to pick one out. Uh, so kind of as we wrap things up here. Would you play for those who are watching our viewers a song that you chose just for them right at this this time? Okay, okay, okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking. Um, can you hear that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I won't. I'll try not well. to sing too loud. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Um, you know, I'm thinking I will share a song that I wrote called uh, separate us and um i think i think that's just really relevant during this time we feel very separated you know social distancing <laughs> but we are so grateful that we serve a god we serve an almighty god who is so personal yet so 
so much bigger than we can imagine. But he is right here with us. And That's there right. is nothing, Romans 8, there is nothing in all of earth, no, no height, nor depth, nothing in all creation, no virus, nothing that could separate us from him. So I think let I think I'm just gonna roll with that today, if that's cool. <laughs> Sometimes I feel so lost And it seems like there's no way back But then I look unto the cross And I see what love has done for me And I know you'll never leave There is nothing, there is nothing that can separate us from you, separate us from you. There is nothing, there is nothing that can separate us from you, separate us from you. Sometimes I feel so lost That I've gone too far to change But then I see how much it costs And so I rest in the blood that was paid but Jesus, your love has made a way Oh, there is nothing, there is nothing that can separate us from you, separate us from you, there is nothing, there is nothing that can separate us from you, separate us from you. Your love is so deep, your love is so high. When I fall, you're by my side. I am weak, but you are strong in my life. And when I'm down, you pick me up. When I feel I'm not in love, you restore me with the power of your love. There is nothing, there is nothing that can separate us from you, separate us from you. Amen. Yes. Awesome. That was great. That, that's, I mean, 
man, I want us to, we need to put that in the rotation on Saturday mornings, man. That was great. Yeah, what a great reminder of, you know, nothing can separate us, not even this COVID-19. Thank you for that, that wonderful message in that song. Mm. Thank the Lord. I mean, honestly, you know, I'm just basically year to year at the mercy. I mean, I'm not trying to sound holy or something, but <laughs> uh, just want to become a vessel for him. And um, I'm at the mercy of kind of specific messages that he gives me. They're for somebody out there. They're for people. They're for uh, churches, different churches, ministries out there, or just people to be encouraged. So that's all I could ever hope for. And just glad to be able to share that message. Thank you. Thank you, Josh, for joining us. You know, we're trying to uh, do something a little different each time. And last week, or last Tuesday, we had a doctor to have a mission. You never know what we're going to have next Tuesday. So stay tuned. Hal and I will be bringing another guest, or maybe it might just be us. We don't know yet. But thank you so much, Josh. I've been camping on this one verse I want to close with, and it's just been so special to me during this time. It says in Psalms 27, 13, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait on the Lord. And uh, we don't know how long we have to wait, but we can wait on the Lord. He's waited for us. And um, I think we're going to go ahead and close now. Is that okay, Hal? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, well, let me pray for you all, and uh, we're just, we're just going to bow our heads here. Father in heaven, thank you so much for allowing us to interview Josh, and what a testimony. He shared only a portion, but what a, what a, a man of God who is convicted that uh, you have inspired him to write songs that will help people. Thank you for him uplifting our spirits. Uh, it did mine, just hearing that song that nothing can separate us from, from your love. May we read Romans 8 again, those closing verses where it reminds us of that. No height, no depth, nothing can separate us from you. Thank you for your love. And until we meet again, may God bless everyone real good. Amen. Thank you all. Amen.